All right, guys, this is Debbie Potts back again to go over how to become a fat adapted athlete as I'm recording this in December and it is the off season and well, maybe not for everybody. I know a lot of people still racing, including this weekend, a triathlon 70.3 in Palm desert, Indian wells that I'm going to watch. And I think a lot of athletes as I used to do in my past life we would race all year and not take a break. So based on my experience and journey, try to take a few months off training and mix it up. And this time of year, I would love to see you uh, do some other activities, trail running, going for hiking, lifting more weights, doing some foundation work. But today I wanna to talk about what Dr. Dan Plews discusses in the Endure IQ program, how to be a low carb, high fat athlete. Now I say low carb athlete. I don't like to say high fat. Cause I am a big fan of getting our protein as we're aging athletes. So high fat and protein, nutrient dense, rich foods. I don't always say keto, but it's a keto paleo carnivore animal based nutrient rich diet. So it's a little very thing just to review past videos. I've recorded this pre-training how to fuel. If you are a fat adapted athlete, some shorter workouts, you can just do black coffee. If you're going a little bit longer duration and you're looking at low heart rate zone, one, two, mafetone, max aerobic function, heart rate, that 180 minus your age. We've talked about forever. That's where you can look at. May I add some collagen and MCT oil as bubs or some Laird's creamer. If you're doing non-dairy great way to sneak in some calories and still burn fat. Now, if you're going a little longer, you may need a meal. Sometimes I like a meal. And also I would look at when I'm working with my clients, when did I eat? If I'm doing this in the morning, what, what time did I stop eating the day before? Cause some days like a Friday, I tend not to eat as much cause I'm got more appointments and I'm swimming and then we're often eating dinner out. So I don't eat lunch. And so it ends up being often less calories than my body probably needs. So sometimes I feel better eating a type of breakfast before my long bike run on Saturday. So all of this are recommendations and it depends on your duration, your intensity, what was your day before look like your training and fueling. And so this is a total example, not to go by exact. So experiment again, N equals one. And it is Dr. Dan Plew's research that they put together this training duration, endurance, strength, Ironman specific, a 70.3 specific race versus a VO2 max all out. Obviously hit training is going to be more glycogen. So that's where we look at more of like the keto gains, adding a little bit of some fuel into coffee or having some S fuels. Uh, they just sent me sample with my order. I just did on S fuels train and they added in some of the granola. So, you know, figure out what to eat. So during your training, what to eat endurance, strength, Ironman specific, half Ironman specific versus a VO two max hit training interval session. When should you eat something? When should you consume some calories during that workout? And when should you just, I'm good with just water. It depends again, so many factors. So did I eat on that long ride before I went, or did I just wake up, have some coffee with some cream and good to go, but then I'm hungry on the bike. If I eat a meal before I do a long bike ride often, I don't eat anything, but I tried experimenting with HVMN ketone IQ halfway on a ride and energy bits packet of 30 bits of LG for tons of vitamins and minerals and amino acids. That is another option. I did that a couple weeks ago and I went four hours and I just had element in my water. I do unsweetened cause I can't do stevia. And I just had some energy from ketones and LG. So here's an example. If you're watching the slides, if you're listening to this, you probably would love to look at the slides I'm sure showing and sharing on the low carb athlete podcast, YouTube channel. Now let's go over this again. I keep talking about this on this Debbie Potts 
podcast episodes, just going over this information, strategic carb timing. So I'm actually interviewing today, Dr. Mindy Pels on fasting and fasting like a girl's her new amazing book coming out end of this month. We're going to talk about fasting for athletes, fasting for the female athlete that has menstrual cycle. And then if you're menopausal female, how do we change that? So take the information out there you hear for keto, nutritional ketosis, say 50 grams a day. That's going to be different for an athlete. Say it's hundred, 130 grams a day. If you want to be in nutritional ketosis, that's going to vary person to person. So experiment. So we want to figure out what works. And then once we are fat adapted, then pay attention, intuitive fueling. I call it. When do you feel best? Does it a fasted exercise feels good. If I ate something the night before, but I didn't eat much the day before. And I worked out a lot more that might change. How is my sleep? How is my recovery? How's repair? And then females, how's my cycle? So how do we get here? It's the Endure IQ fat adaptation phases that we look at. So phase one, as I've discussed before, baseline, when I start working with you, I'm just observing. Don't change anything. Just let me watch what you eat. So you're going to enter. I use practice better. You can use chronometer and it connects. If you use NutriSense or CGM from your doctor, I want to see those numbers. You're going to track your workouts on training peaks. I'm going to look at all this data, just observing and learning about you. Also, if you wear a whoop or HRV device as Hanu health, or you're doing aura, I want to know what your heart rate variability and your readiness each day, because that will tell us a lot of information as well. So I'm just collecting data and observations. So phase one's baseline. Phase two, we're looking at, all right, let's start switching some of these things I saw you eating the previous week. Now I want you to be open-minded to choosing a whole foods source instead of that packaged food or seeing what areas of your food intake are easy to switch to something else. So I'll give you some ideas what we can swap out. So we're transitioning to whole foods. Really, we want nutrition or food fuel coming from real food, even supplements, taking aminos and all this stuff. I'd rather you eat real food sources, which is why I started making this super high dose, super gut SIBO yogurt from Dr. William Davis based on his book, super gut. And it's amazing how it, your body responds to real food sources first. So like taking milk thistle and dandelion tea and stinging nettles. Sometimes people need all that for liver health, but drinking it in a tea instead. So getting cruciferous vegetables for your liver health might be a good swap to getting some broccoli, getting some cauliflower, getting some Brussels sprouts, you know, looking at all this. So that's whole foods. And then phase three, notice we don't just jump into cold keto. We start gradual steps because this is not a diet. It's a slow, gradual transition. We are working on together. Now I'm going to offer this program as a group. So if you're interested, let me know, trying to get 20, 30 people together in a group in the new year to do this cold keto three weeks. You're doing 70% fat. 50 grams of carbs, plus or minus, depending on the person, animal proteins, getting those healthy fats. So I don't like to count calories. I don't think that's necessary, but I want to look at what is your goal body weight. That's what we're going to try to hit for your percentage of proteins and get healthy fats from the pro animal protein and from other sources as avocados and olive oil, coconut. I like getting lots of avocado and olives into my food. Also looking at non-starchy vegetables, but choosing good sources of probiotic and prebiotic foods, because it's all about to me, your liver health, your microbiome growing the good bacteria. So probiotic foods, and then feeding your garden, your probiotics, your microbiome, your garden and your gut. That's what prebiotics are kind of fertilizer for your gut. So we want to really focus 
on proper digestion, proper liver detoxification phase one and two and three is our drainage pathways. And we want to focus on gut health. So while we are switching to what's called a cold keto phase in Dan Plus program, we are doing this for three weeks, but it's really focusing on nutrient rich foods that balance your blood sugar and ends up, ends up being healthy fats, healthy protein sources from real food, and then placing in those carbs, maybe more so at dinner time or post workout. Females, we do this again. I've discussed this, not the same time as men. We're going to look at our female cycle, days seven of your menstrual cycle to day 14. You can do this cold keto phase. So not right when you're starting your cycle, but right afterwards, and then stopping before your ovulation phase. And I want to talk to Dr. Mindy about this one. Now overview, we want to match our fueling with our training. So intuitively, hopefully you guys realize when you are doing a low carb fat adapted process program transition phase, it's not forever that we're staying that low. Other people that are not athletes and they're metabolically damaged, they have other health issues. They probably will stay lower. You are an athlete training at least once a day, especially if you don't have a lot of fat to lose, or you are, you know, looking at working out more and you are trying to get stronger. You will adjust those macros if you're doing different type of workouts. So when we are doing phase one, when I'm just trying to observe and learn about you, you're just going to do your normal workout program. Cause remember I'm observing, matching your training and your fueling, seeing what's going on. And then phase two on the whole foods phase, your workouts are going to be the same, but we're going to start to reduce the volume about 10%. Remember, this is just transition phase. This is kind of the reset reboot of your fat metabolism to be a fat adapted athlete. And then we get into phase three, the cold keto phase, remember is different for men and women, but we're going to reduce your training load that week or two weeks. You can reduce your training load 20 to 25%. Dr. Dan Plew's research in their program suggests this, but you are maintaining two hit training sessions per week during cold keto. So remember hit is high heart rate all out. It's going to be using glycogen fuel, stored carbohydrate fuel as glycogen, glucose into glycogen, using that for fuel. Now, when we get out of that low carb, high fat phase, we transition finding your sweet spot phase four. So we're going to gradually increase your training back over two to three weeks and you're returning to your normal structure after that. So we want this to be like, it's maybe six week program for some people, especially women, when we break up the cold keto phase. So baseline, again, just to review, I've done this in another presentation, monitor what you're doing. We want to test glucose, test to not guess, write down your food using chronometer or practice better. You're going to add in your heart rate variability there and glucose ketones. If you have that now we want to figure out what your normal ranges are, what your typical habits are, especially I'm looking at what time you're eating, when would be what time, how are you eating slowly digesting your food, chewing your food? Are you rushing? Are you multitasking? Are you in your car? at your desk, when are you eating? How are you eating? Why are you eating? So we're starting to understand how types of food work for you while we're collecting data. So we want to do this suggested for two weeks, collecting data, CGM, HRV, and other information, depending on the client, what they have. Now, remember stage two is when we switch to whole foods, nutrient dense, real whole foods that balances your blood sugar. And that ends up being low carb, haha, <laughs> depending on the person. We have different genetics. Some people are more sensitive to carbs, especially if you're pre peri 
and postmenopausal, we're more carbon sensitive. So it depends on the female, what phase in life and the hormones they are, but also genetics. If you're more prone to type two diabetes, so your carb tolerance is going to vary per person, but generally we're teaching that body to metabolize fat and that macronutrient ratio varies for you. But right now, as we're looking at this phase two, stage two, we are turning the body into a fat burning machine. So we're not really moving your macros around. We're just removing the processed foods. That's huge in itself, right? Just get rid of the crap, get rid of the Franken foods, get rid of the crap in your freezer and your fridge and your pantry and we're restock and start to eat real food and stop eating fast food and picking stuff up. It's learning how to meal prep is what we end up doing now, increasing your glucose. So we want to make sure we're doing this phases, not just jumping into keto because you need to prepare your body, right? So we want to make sure the liver is where carbs are gradually decreasing. So we want to take time. So the liver knows how to metabolize fat and teach it how to use ketones or make ketones. So the ketones can be used as an alternative fuel source for the brain. The brain can use glucose and ketones. So we want to be able to get the liver functioning first to optimal level, and then get the fat metabolism, fat oxidation working. So we want to make sure we're increasing the fat and the protein gradually. That's why we want to take time here, not just going cold keto right away. So we're here for two weeks and then we get to cold keto, two week fat adaptation could be three weeks. It could be one week and one week during days seven to 14 for the female that's on a hormone cycle. Now during cold keto, this is where it's really individualized. So testing your ketones with keto mojo or using biosense using some type of device to measure is optional because a lot of times you can just tell how you feel, but it's nice to test and not guess when you're first starting and then just do it once in a while to kind of check in with yourself. So the goal average carbs about 50 grams, and that's going to be coming from your good liver detoxification, supporting vegetables. So the broccoli, cauliflower, those type of foods is what I'd suggest to my clients. Let's really optimize that liver because everyone I work with has dysbiosis in their gut and has liver that's congested. So really getting some dandelion tea, milk thistle, getting some glutathione, NAC, really working on that, but also eating foods that help get the nutrients for phase one and phase two, kind of your wash cycle and your rinse cycle and your drainage cycles, phase three. So low carb ketogenic, you're going higher fat, about 75%. Now I, I hate, okay. Hate strong word, but dislike when people do crappy food. This is where I think a lot of people get in trouble doing dirty keto and having a lot of the vegetable oil. So you really want to be clean keto, getting healthy, natural fats and not doing those packaged keto foods that's filled with garbage. So don't fall into that trap. Remember, we're switching to real food, nutrients dense, not going for anything that is labeled keto, keto approved. It usually is filled with a lot of uh, guar gum and erythritol, monk fruit, stevia, and all sorts of other stuff. So I'd rather you focus on healthy animal sourced protein, healthy fats, and getting your carbohydrates from in-season vegetables. Okay. So track and measure. And that's why I use practice better. People can journal on there, use the app called better. And some prefer chronometer and they use chronometer and it will sync to better. So I can track all that. And then training peaks ideally would talk to better, but it does not. So I have to have two programs. So Dr. Tim or professor Noakes has the green foods that I'll send people animal proteins, fats, dairies, cow dairy, isn't great for everyone. So doing 
you know, sheep or goat cheese kind of dairy, coconut milk is a good alternative to cow dairy. If you use yogurts and cottage cheese and sour cream, stuff like that, there's other sources. And then nut seed seeds are not good for people that have gut issues. So we want to look at what your, your symptoms are. So I always use a nutritional therapy analysis to get people's signs and symptoms before we begin. And then really personalize, individualize their food program and then vegetables, you know, that varies per person again, going for the healthy microbiome, prebiotic foods and foods that feed your liver, not irritate your gut. So properly prepared foods is essential. So cold keto, you know, looking at in keto module, they have great infographics for, you can see, you know, 0.5 to 1.5 moderate ketone range, I think is great point zero five, I think is enough for athletes. Personally, I don't think you need to be super high ketones when you're just trying to get fat adapted. So you're just showing 0.1 I've heard is a good enough, but you know, 0.5 to deep ketosis up to two, up to three is, is a lot, but it depends on you and how much you're exercising. I think it might change. So don't be stuck on ketones go by how you feel and your energy and how long are you feeling good? Not having to eat, you know, have those cravings for carbs, your taste for flavor should change. You're not craving sweet, but start changing your desire for more bitter foods. That helps too. That's why I don't like all those keto sweeteners because I think you're still training your brain to have sugar. So you're not really switching to get off the sugar habit. Okay. So other things here, athletes need to adjust when they do the cold keto phase. Remember day seven, day 14 for late follicular to ovulation, which is like after the first week to second week of their cycle, heart rate variability, glucose track measure, progression, carbs to minimum and match your workouts to lower intensity. So during keto, keto, you're just doing two hit training to really make sure you're okay there. Example day, Dr. Dan Plews talks about his day. Remember he is working out a lot, but a morning fat coffee, MCT oil and collagen, he works out. And then his first meal food, real food is egg, sardines, broccoli made with coconut oil. Then he has another cup of coffee with some cream. And then when he's hungry again, because he's like working out all the time, S fuels a bar, or he can do almonds. Not everyone can do almonds. So, you know, make sure we look at your oxalates, phytates, lectins, all that stuff when we do your lab testing. And so if you're doing a double workout that day, he takes a bar as S fuels. It's a low carb bar for athletes. It's a great option. And then his meal. So that was breakfast. Now he's going to have lunch, a salmon all with olive oil on the salmon, I think avocado and asparagus. Now I'm actually having salmon for lunch and my husband is a chef. So I hope I like to have pesto on my salmon, which is just basil blended with olive oil. And you can put some maybe cheese in it. If you can do cheese, but Parmesan or goat cheese, if you're trying not to do dairy and then maybe as Dan had some asparagus. So some grilled asparagus, some olive oil, sea salt is delish with that salmon. That's a good combo. And then his dinner, so this is a ton of food. So don't think you're not eating. You're just keeping your carbs low. It's not like you're not eating. You're so full. Actually, most people can't eat. I wouldn't be able to eat all this. <laughs> so steak was his dinner here and a simple salad with dark chocolate for dessert. So check your dark chocolate that it is low. And I think it's important to are not low, but high 80% chocolate, dark chocolate. And what it is, and that you're just having one square. You know, I like to have almond or not almond butter. I'm trying to switch from almond butter to sunflower butter, a little piece of dark chocolate, or, uh, this would not be cold keto phase, but just side note, a little sunflower butter on a slice of apple or celery is my new favorite little dessert treat. So anyways, this day is about 50 grams total. So the carbs are going to come from a simple salad, from his asparagus, from his broccoli. The rest is fat and protein. 
So tips on the cold keto phase. Again, I've said this before, but heart rate variability is really important to test because it's going to give you feedback, biofeedback. If you're doing too much of something, too much stress on your nervous system, really, really, really important to track what is your normal, your baseline. And when it's higher than normal or lower, and when it's lower, you want to, you know, take a, a pause and see what you can adjust and you want it higher. So it's normal response when you're going cold keto, as you adapt to fat adapted athlete, it may take two to three weeks. So as you're having this stressor of not having the carbohydrates in your body and your metabolism is switching to more fat oxidation for fuel over carb metabolism, we may see lower HRV. Now, remember the goal is we'll get to this later, not to be in keto all the time. I'll throw in right here, because if you listen to my recent podcast with Kristen, we talked about metabolic flexibility going both directions. So as you become fat adapted, you're there for a little bit, and then you need a day that you're not in ketosis. So doc or Ben Azadi talks about this in his book, keto flex, that you're in and out of nutritional ketosis. People get so stuck on saying they need to be in ketosis all the time. It really concerns me. So once you are fat adapted, you can add in some carbs after a post hard workout, maybe on a Sunday, you're doing a long run. You can tolerate a little more carbohydrates and not be obsessed with showing ketones and, you know, just balancing your blood sugar, but you, you still need, and I did this to myself to metabolize carbohydrates. So if you listen to Jay Feldman, he's really make a good point that if you don't do well with real source carbs as fruits and vegetables, what is your, why, why is your metabolism not working? So I, for example, couldn't have apples and fruit for the past 10 years. And I finally can have a half an apple with some nut butter, as I just said, and I don't have a headache. It's great. So I'm excited. I just need not to do that all the time, but it doesn't spike me up or maybe I'm more insulin sensitive and timing it that my body I, on a nutrient panel, I needed chromium. And maybe things are just functioning better. I added a missing ingredient. So test to not guess. Okay. So back to the slide, cold keto phase tips and tricks. Glucose may increase when you're in cold keto, high cortisol might be higher. Stress is higher. So cortisol may be higher as your body starts to getting into more ketones, you'll start to see higher cortisol. So high cortisol as a stress response will increase your glucose. So you may see some numbers changing on your keto mojo or glucose meter. Now, higher intensity workouts, Dan Plews suggests during this cold keto phase to keep the body adapting. So it's normal to have a lower performance. That's why I remember the matching the exercise and the fueling together. You want to have your exercise lower during this week to two week transition phase of low carb. So may match your fueling with that training. So we're going to cut everything down, but high intensity to hit training per week. Remember that's high heart rate to low heart rate, not just keeping your heart rate high for 20 minutes. Okay. Also sleep can be disrupting carbs at night, maybe 10 grams that you can have, maybe a little honey in your tea that might help. Um, what else could you do? I like having some bone broth with some sea salt, but that's not carbs. Um, maybe it's my new gut probiotic yogurt. That's coconut. And then you could add some berries in that if you want to do that at night. But if your sleep is an issue, I would try my new probiotic yogurt with L ruteri that increased my deep sleep by 10% last night, but trying a little bit of berries might help you if your blood sugar is dysregulated during night. But also to me, if you have a big drop in your glucose every night, that's a sign of something else, or if you have a spike. So it's, we want to look at the whole picture, but keto flu your body's low in carbs. So struggling in that transition period. So you want to add salt, potassium, magnesium. So that's why we love element, which you get a free pack on your order. When you use my code, low carb athlete. So phase four, finally, we're working on finding that sweet spot. So if you're watching the slides, a picture of me with my favorite 
brand of bone broth called Bonafide Provisions. Find in your freezer section. I just bought a whole bunch. It's on sale usually this time of year. So I'll stock up, buy a ton of it when it's lower priced. So when you're in that transition period, after you've gone to this cold keto, low 50 grams a day of carbs, now we move back up. We're going to find what is your carb tolerance, intolerance, what works best for you. And this is going to vary for women based on their cycle. We're going to adjust that carb intake to be higher during ovulation and your luteal phase. And again, I'll talk to Dr. Mindy about this today. And then men, you know, working on, if you're doing high glycogen dependent fueled exercise, you can time those carbs after there, after that session, when you're hungry, and then say your evening meal is suggested to place those carbs. So they'll give you glycogen restocked. So you can work out in the morning and have some fuel in the tank. If you are doing more anaerobic workout. So eating the green foods on the list from the banting diet, doctor, or obviously doctor, professor, Tim Noakes and the orange foods. So if your HRV is decreasing, your carbs may be too low and training intensity too high. So those are some good methods to why we want to test and not guess. If your glucose is getting higher, carbs may be too high and you might, as I said, have underlying inflammation. So cortisol, remember will increase glucose. So if cortisol is high, it's not always external stress. It's always a combination internal and external. So most of you, I guarantee have H pylori parasites, every lab test I run, everyone's got something. So test and not guess GI map or Genova diagnostics GI test. And let's look at the GI test and your blood chemistry and your urine test to really see what's going on. But high intensity performance, if it's going down, your performance is getting crappy and you've been doing this for six weeks, still not working. Remember what the definition is of insanity. It is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So think about adjusting your carb timing in and around your workout. So experiment, no one can tell you exactly what to do, but maybe I'm going to have a harder run workout this morning and I lift weights before, well, maybe my coffee, I will add some Laird's creamer with the pumpkin spice that has a little coconut sugar in it for their sweetener. And I have them MCT oil in there and they add a scoop of bubs collagen protein. There's calories. There's some carbs. If I want to work out and then eat my lunch. So I swim at lunchtime most days. And then my lunch around two, three o'clock in the afternoon will be my dinner. And there is where I'm experimenting, adding in some of those orange foods, like while well, it's winter time. So squash root vegetables, but I did get some sauerkraut that was made from beets. You know, sometimes Neil will make some smashed potatoes and grilled beets and put those in bacon fat and make them crispy under the broiler and have that with our burger steak or today's salmon. So checking out, you know, different options. I've been trying to eat carrots. So when we get those carrots from our local farm, it's, they're kind of dirty, different colors. You know, those are the good carrots and I think I haven't eaten parsnips, but, um, you know, sweet potatoes, sometimes grilled onions. Those are good too. So going back to the sweet spot is finding that cyclical keto or targeted ketogenic diet TKD. So if you're doing high intensity workout certain days, remember to add in additional carbs right before, or even during that workout, high intensity training requires glucose. So keep your energy levels up for these workouts, easily digested carbohydrates and an experiment with what amount makes you feel good to find out your target. So if your workout is crappy and you're trying to do this low carb, high fat keto athlete type of work on your nutrition, you got to match it with your feelings. So, you know, not all carbs are evil. It's eating real nutrient dense food, not getting the packaged crap. So the main goal is to find what foods make you feel good. So not having a bagel or having a bar or a gel or some pre-workout load drink that filled with junk. So look at it. So these are some other tips, CKD, cyclical ketogenic diet, CKD, 
alternating, say five to six days, you're doing low carb. Then one to two days, you're doing your carb, real food carbs, sweet potatoes, winter squash, legumes, eating by the season, replenishing your glycogen stores to improve muscle mass or performance, refeeding carbohydrates. So when you're going to the gym, you want to, you know, get yourself back into ketosis quickly. You can start the cycle again. Fasting, of course, always does that. Eating a nightly carb refeed. If you're doing a harder workout in the morning is a good option. Again, this is real food suggestions. So the carbs that we talk about are not crappy carbs. We're talking about real nutrient dense carb foods. So maybe it's some berries or good vegetables, as I talked about for your microbiome and good vegetables for your liver detox pathways, phase one and two. So females avoiding keto and fasting during the week of your cycle before the cycle begins. So that's that late luteal phase and hormone building carbs that week. So looking at those foods that feed your progesterone, because we want to build progesterone up during luteal and then five days on two days off is another option doing a five, one, one, which is five days more ketogenic one day fast one day refeed. And so you can kind of mix that up. So fasting a 20, 24 hour fast on a rest day, once a month, that might be a good option for you, but really do that on your active recovery day. So you're just doing a walk, some yoga, stretching, mobility, foundational work. And then I think it's great to do a bone broth fast, not just a water fast for athletes. So learn more on my website, debbiepotts.net and the Lou, the Lou, the low carb athlete podcast. You can find more on the YouTube channel and social media, share the, this podcast and the videos if you like it. So we can get this word out to other endurance athletes who would like to be fit and healthy from the inside out to burn fat, to optimize health and to improve performance for yourself today, but remember for your future self. So enjoy, and we will continue on next time. Let me know what you'd like to learn more of. All right. Thank you and enjoy the day today.